part of that has to do with the environment that we grew up in. And I think that, uh, you know, it was a, you know, a pretty stimulating artistic environment. I think it was, and it wasn't always music either. I mean, growing up, there was a lot of film and, and uh, literature and, um, and then there was music as well. So we kind of grew up listening to vinyl, you know. It'd be like a, 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 a toy of sorts, you know, like before we were listening to it, we were taking the vinyl and we were putting it on the on the player and just trying to figure out how to use it and that's what we would you know do and then later we started listening to a lot of this stuff so we grew up around around a lot of vinyl our parents had a large collection an interesting way to discover music you know and uh especially that young so i think growing up around it um had a lot to do with it and the uh, and uh musical environment as well because my, my our father is actually a uh is a chemist but he's also a blues musician he plays harmonica and so and uh so there's always like people around playing music. You know, a lot of family was, you know, were musically, uh, uh, musically versed, and then you know friends would come and play. So there's always music in and out. So something that was always there, and um, I think that uh, I think early on we picked up on a lot of that, and uh, kind of saw how it had the ability to bring people together. You know, uh, I think pretty we pretty much know all, all of the same music, but. Uh, that's not to say that we have the sim very similar tastes, because at you know, at some point I think we were we were pretty close as far as what we what we listened to, and at some point we all kind of branched off and grew in separate ways. And uh, you know, I say that uh, Josh listens to very cultural music, lots of world music, and Sam listens to more jazz than most any of us. And, uh, and Danny listens to a lot of folk, and uh, I suppose I probably listen to more rock and roll. Hmm. It was always changing, but um, we listen. We grew up listening to because like, all of the vinyls were very roots music or traditional. So in that me in that sense, sort of uh, very or origins music, and that was like blues. So a lot of like Elmore James, Holland Wolf, Muddy Waters, Lightning Hopkins, BB King, all the Kings, you know that stuff. And then folk, there was uh, Arlo, Woody Woody Guthrie and Arlo Guthrie and, and Bob Dylan and. Joni Mitchell and John Denver and Joan Baez, things like that, and then um, so really early kind of stuff, and and then the R&B stuff. There was Aretha Franklin, and all the black R&B blues singers and female blues singers. It's a lot of that stuff, and it kind of just you know uh, expanded from that point where you know where we're, you know, we really didn't listen to rock and roll until we were more into high school, where it was like. But then we could hear a lot of these traditional elements that we grew up listening to, because it's sort of a personified version of all of those things. Doing that groundwork and sort of understanding uh, elementally what was done, it's sort of a teaching, I guess. And looking back, I mean, it taught us a lot and, uh, as far as musicianship and as far as, you know, what can be done and, you know, where can we go from what's been done. So it's like taking what's left behind is the teachings of music and bringing it to our present day to our generation and then evolving it further and I think that helps to know the to, to know those teachings you know through this music I think it's I think that it, it's rooted in just the guitar itself almost and what they were able to do with the instrument I remember being really young and sitting on the ground and it was my first experience and it's like something that I'd always been searching for musically is like what where, where do I stand what 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 you know what can I contribute and I was probably around seven or eight very young and just a memory that's kind of singed in there and it was like I was sitting on the ground watching a cream documentary on a VCR with my dad and then Eric Clapton came in and started playing and stuff and that was kind of that one moment where you knew exactly what you wanted to do and so it was like it's like, I want to be that guy, you know, I want to play guitar like that. And so it was like, I think Eric Clapton was actually one of the first influences of mine. But, and then, you know, Hendrix was a little bit later. They were kind of the, the masters who left behind, you know, how to, you know, stylistically with the plans. But I think it was more my uh, interest in it uh, would be kind of the, the, the mysticism of it, you know, because it's something that's still, there's something mysterious about it, and I don't know what it is, and I'm still searching for it. I don't know. I guess that uh, um, the premise kind of varies. I guess, and in, in, in as far as I guess my opinion of uh, what that what that is, I think it's I think it's emotion one, mm. and being able to 
play with, you know, I guess to exude the, uh, you know, that human emotion. And I guess it's like it'd be easier for a better guitar player to speak directly from his heart to his fingers, you know. But uh, yeah, that's that's one. Um, and uh, I think stylistically, what you know, a great guitar player can do is speak and through his instrument, and I. Uh, and you can hear the originality in that. I think that's another thing that sort of made legends of those great guitar players. Yeah, I think, you know, it was like you said earlier, where it was really kind of studying all of what they did and kind of learning what they did. And uh, I said, you know, some of those things still live very much in my uh, articulation of playing. Like, uh, you know, I still play certain looks that I learned from Cream Clapton and, and from Hendrix and, you know, like, but then there's also a lot of things that the more I play, especially when we, the more we write music, you know, that, you know, I can either, either so it comes to me very instantly or it's sitting down and sort of premeditating how it's going to be arranged. Through that, I think a lot kind of comes through that's, you know, that's new, that's basically my voice, you know? So it's like playing with that and then, you know, every night when you're on stage and you're not necessarily, um, you know, I guess, again, premeditating what you're going to play. It's just sort of flowing naturally, and a lot comes from that as well. So there are certain runs that I'll play that are from things I've learned from Clapton and those guys, and then a lot from, from I guess, you know, from those incidences and, and those little things that I created myself. And, yeah. um, and it's interesting because it, the, the, the way that we write it kind of varies every time, and it's kind of different. Um, it's always someone bringing something to the table, and, uh, and it's like whether it's something I write on the guitar, and I say, "Well, I've got this arranged. I've got this skeleton. You know, I need this is what I'm thinking." And then you know, whoever kind of brings in the you know essential, the essence or the idea, they're kind of the uh, the uh, the leader of that song, and they kind of have more creative say over it. So if it's something I bring on a guitar or if it's something Danny can bring on guitar, or Sam brings in the keys, or even mandolin, because we're kind of versed. It's like, it's difficult to really find a way to expand or, you know, do something dimensional when you're kind of writing on the same instrument using the same tunings, you know? So it's like, you, you know, so when we bring in ideas and mandolins and, you know, banjo and I have alternative tuning ideas. And so it's like, when I bring it in, they have an idea, Josh brings in an idea. It's like whoever does, whenever it does, and it kind of happens pretty quickly. Where it's like, okay, here's the idea, everybody jumps on it, and it pretty much comes together within a 15 minute period, you know? And then that's the song. Um, sometimes it goes from acoustic to electric, and then, you know, the acoustic at that time is the only thing that I have. But sometimes, you know, just based on what amp or what guitar, there's, you know, a, a riff or something writes itself and then it's like it originates on a, you know with an electric guitar because of how you know how it sounds and a lot of it's written on acoustic yeah yeah and I think it's it's great too that in, in the essence of of the song or you know that uh, when it's kind of when it's created on an acoustic and you know well fundamentally this is really well arranged it's really you know, it's really well put together and we can enjoy it as it is, organically like that, and to move it into electric and arrangement, and always be stripped down and, and at the soul of the song that it serves its purpose purpose with an acoustic just as well as it does electric. You know? uh, I think, yeah, I think so, you know, and I think a lot of that, I guess artistically, is like growing up sharing all these same experiences um, and, and similar life experiences, same house, same parents, things like that. It's like, but musically, I mean, as far back as we can remember making music together, it's kind of like, you know, now on stage, it just takes a look and the other guy knows what you're, t what you're getting at. You know? it's, it's, it's another form of communication that, I guess, uh, evolved over a long period of time. <laughs> and it's like, it's, it works miraculously that we all kind of seem to be on the same page aren't you know musically but when there is a disagreement you know then it becomes then it can become you know violent it's like when we used to be in the garage and we'd play and we'd rehearse and we'd be writing songs early on 
and Josh would be pissed off because we had a disagreement. And it's mainly him and I, but but yeah, I mean, there's a you know always a window to be broken or something to be thrown or oh yeah. And my mom would come in screaming, and we had you know we had our manager there most often. He was another uh, Michael Barbie is his name, but he was from our hometown and. And he would physically have to separate us, you know, because it got that it got that intense. Or you know, our previous drummer of ours running, you know, I, every time he brought over a double bass pedal, and I did not like it, I would throw it in the yard, and he'd chase me around, you know. So it was like, I don't know, but yeah. So it can it can you come to the point where we're bumping heads and it can get physical. But I think over a longer, you know, the period of time, we've kind of learned that we have, you know to respect each other. And I think there's a thing about space as well. And it's like if some there's a disagreement, then then you you know to be wiser to walk out of the room and wait till later to discuss it. I think any 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 place within nature's would be probably the the optimal place to listen to it. The album is called Anthem of the Peaceful Army, and um, what kind of inspired that was you know all these. Uh, shows that we've been conti con you know continually playing and and it's it was a really powerful thing to see all of these people show up whether it be at one of our shows or at at a festival um but they're all kind of they're you know united by music and uh, i think you know a lot of the um a lot of the songs that were around for a while we'd actually had recorded a lot quite a bit of them so we we decided to re-record absolutely everything and um, so, you know, even if they had been around a while, we've been playing these songs live for about a year and a half now. Yeah, I think what we're trying to do, too, is build visually, is start sort of constructing a visual platform for sort of the, the sonic uh, medium that we have, you know, reflecting on, you know, human, the human condition and um, um, sort of evolution and lessons of history and where we came from, where we are now, where we're going, and um, you know, things of peace and love and unity and some of those elements. And those are certain themes within the album that sort of construct the deeper meaning um, through the, through the, you know, music or lyrically. We're working with Al Sutton who, and Marlon Young and Herschel Boone, who are both Kid Rock and Kid Rock's camp. Um, and we worked with Al um, on the Black Smoke Rising and From the Fires. And, um, you know, an individual kind of, we'd been in and out of studios at a very young age, about, you know, 16 and, and the likes of around that time. And we got into Rust Belt Studios, um, Al Sutton's studio. And over the course of three years or so now, he's really helped shape us as studio musicians and, and, and basically given us the, the knowledge we need to, to be better studio musicians. We kind of went up for a week into to sort of isolation and, and into nature, right? which is where, you know, you have creative solace in, in a way. Um, and we put together a few songs there, but Age of Man was one that had really come to, to, to flourishing in that trip where we were writing and um, message wise you know lyrically it, 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 it's very much about the evolution of man and that's a great deal of why it's actually on the album first because it kind of it kind of is that overarching theme of the album that is where we came from where we are now where we're going you know and the, and the torch it still burns that sort of thing Yeah, and I think that that's the resolving, resulting uh, voice of uh, voice of uh, positivity. <laughs> I think Josh was reading The Good Earth around that time, a book good, called The good, good Earth. So there's kind of some references to that in there, some some nuggets, if you will. It started out as a riff that that was kind of around, and it was probably maybe a year and a half ago that it was written because I remember being in the garage still basically and, you know jamming there and 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 playing that through that and um he said wow this could be an entire song so when we decided we wanted to you know 
make deem it a song we kind of got together and and pretty much arranged it in one day and then after that it just kind of took on life and became another what an homage to sort of rock and roll and it was it's very it's a very you know blunt and um simple stated song where it's not very difficult to be misconstrued or misinterpreted and everybody will have their own interpretations of it and all on all of these songs but it was kind of our kick in the kick down the door song you know like that was a song we kind of knew it had to be on the album and um and and what we did with that again it's it's a very heavy uh, chorus um riff and i think that we were playing with a lot of different elements in that song as far as you know there's sort of a middle eastern feel towards the you know strung throughout it and um using a sitar guitar in for the solo and um and um the arrangement of that we were also trying to do something a bit more avant-garde when when it came to arranging the song and the parts it's a very it's a rather relatively simple structure but um you know hanging on one string as a pre-chorus and sort of you know playing that sort of scale um was something that you know is unique and i think we were playing around with different elements like that for sure yeah, within that chorus too, there's, a, it could become monotonous if there wasn't something that could lift it or lend it some, you know, um, some more character. And I think in the background, you know, there's, there's that voice, that kind of low tonal voice that it almost sounds like a, of a spirit that kind of lifts those parts of it, and it becomes more you know you've kind of melancholy in that way and i think that that was a really good way to achieve that 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 emotion and it's been something that we've incorporated in our set for a long time and it quickly became the thing in our set which there are you know simple structures or outlines of um of songs and then there are there's space within that simple structure for um sort of you know jamming and in improvisation and that quickly became a song that we incorporated in the set where there's basically love or leave or take a believer which is what a seven minute song ish turns into a 30 minute song because we've incorporated so many different elements within the breakdown you know in different actual different parts of different songs and some covers and some things that we move into it so it was like a really loose um arrangement for you know for love reliever live so that was something that was um done in the studio as well that there isn't it's not a simple verse pre-chorus chorus you know so on uh uh format as it is there's so many different changes and that it doesn't really stick to uh, a basic format the song determines whether the, uh, it, I solo, my solo is written or it's improv. And Love Reliever was kind of calling for something that was written. So I'd sat down, uh, you know, the year, years ago when it was first written and, re- and wrote the first solo, which kind of, uh, you know, takes, goes a few different ways. And, uh, and then to even take it in a different direction, the second solo at the very end was a slide solo. Yeah, I think that was a very important song to all of us because it was the first acoustic song I think we ever wrote together. It was it was the first song that, with all four members, was put down the uh, put down the uh, the electric and pick up the acoustic and sit around the campfire and and, and figure it out, you know. And I don't think that it, 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 along with that that you you particularly search out to find a song rather than it sort of lends itself to you and in this in the case of new day that's it's really emphasized um and it was it was very much there's a thousand lives and there's a thousand deaths every second and if we were to write a song five minutes from now it wouldn't be the same songs if we started writing it at this very moment and i think we were all trapped actually at the house (laughs) so yeah we kind of sat around and that was something that we were tooling around with, the new day, and 
and Josh kind of walked in and started singing to it, and I, we was working something out, and then Sam kind of walked in and, and started jamming around and working something, working that song out, because there was nowhere to go. We were trapped for three days at home, um, and and we came up with New Day, and in one day, <laughs> and and uh, it kind of took on its another meaning of you know it's it, it sort of can be simple to say that it lends itself to tomorrow will be brighter you know that sort of message as sort of a work of 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 get of, of guitar work that that um i'm relatively proud of as far as it's you know ability ability to be techn technical and um still show restraint so it was a it was a it was a moving in a very new and again that was an approach at doing something more avant-garde with a song for the album and um and it's a very it's a pretty powerful message lyrically as well yeah and i think it's i'm interested i won't say too much about the lyrics um when it was one josh isn't here too again it's it's that song in particular it's uh it's really up for interpretation but i think poetically throughout and lyrically it's um it's it's a song of rebellion you know it's a song of to fight back against any power that you know that that makes you weak you know and you know we, we will not be hypnotized which is part, part of the chorus and and another poetic po portion of it lyrically a silent child climbs a mound of char where he plants a seed that grows beyond the stars i suppose we've been touring now for uh about a year uh, mainly in the States and Europe, um, but this is our first time getting into Canada, um, and uh, I suppose that you know there's there's many factors that could have uh, persuaded that sort of audience to to you know come in in that in that amount of mass. I think that has a lot to do with uh, you know uh, an important childhood with music. You know, it's like there are three of us our brothers in the band and um we grew up around a lot of our parents vinyls um and it was it was a lot of that stuff and we were kind of raised in a, a musically uh um nurturing environment where it wasn't necessarily just music but there's a lot of film and a lot of literature and we had a lot of um traditional music you know lying around like roots music like blues that was you know Elmore James Willie Dixon Robert Johnson Muddy Waters Howlin' Wolf you know all the kings that you know very early on american blues stuff that wasn't necessarily you know because and in, in, in folk you know like people like Arlo Guthrie and and Bob Dylan Joni Mitchell John so, Denver So this was your your mom and dad? Yeah, a lot of that. I think that a lot of it was put there in purpose being that it was traditional you know that early early on music a lot of early american music and it's like you know it wasn't until like i think about high school that we all started getting into what is you know commonly known for is rock and roll you know a lot of the british invasion and that sort of stuff I think, you know, that we figured, we fi you know, it was like we came together and sort of started just organically playing around musically and that's, you know, it's just sort of what happened. I suppose that's a, 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 a benefactor of our, um, our youthful ignorance in the sense that we don't particularly, we're not really, you know, going for one sound or another, you know, just in general, but artistically, I think that we're on a, you know, we're on the same page a lot of the time where it's like, well, what creatively has to happen here when we come to a juncture where we're deciding, well, should the, you know, what should the guitar be doing here? And I think we're all like, yeah, it should be doing this or, you know, it's like as an example, but you know, that affects the live performance as well because it, it may just take a glance at someone for them to know exactly what you're talking about or where you're going. It was interesting. It was a very romanticized thing, you know, like that ideology, like Americana. There's like, you know, it's like the small town and it's surrounded by farm fields. And so we kind of lived about 10, 15 minutes outside of town, sort of in the country. And, um, you know, we would be playing in the, in, the, in the fields and, you know, exploring the forest and, the, yeah, just exploring around. And 
But it was, yeah, it was interesting. And the fact that there wasn't particularly, a, a, uh, you know, an overwhelming music scene in that small town. There wasn't really much going on. I think there's more going on now than there was, but there wasn't anything to grab onto. There wasn't uh, um, things around us influencing us other than pretty much what was, you know, on the radio. And then what, at that time, whatever was played going to school on the bus, and which was a lot of pop, I think. And it was like... You know, we'd rather, you know, get we'd get home and go, this doesn't sound like the records that we were playing and stuff like that. I don't know if we ever did or still do. <laughs> I think it was, uh, um, I, I, I should start where, you know, it was about sophomore year that there was a, I, I joined the jazz band because I, I think, I, you know, it's been a while that I wanted to put something together musically and I wanted to get a band together and, um, there was a new kid coming from outside of town who, had pl- who was playing drums for the jazz band. And so I sort of, um, you know, re- recruited him to come and play. And we played, you know, in the, in the garage in our house after school most often. And, and so, you know, we needed someone to sing. And, I, you know, Josh started coming out. And, we, he, you know, we'd grown up singing in the car and singing you know, the records a lot and whatever. And he was always singing, so... You know, it was right that he would be brought in. And then we started, we needed a bass player. So Sam never played any bass. And he was probably around 13 or 14 at this point. And I think we tried to drag him into the garage. Every time he'd get home from school, he'd try to get up to one door. And he had this routine where he would go do his homework. And we would start interjecting, you know. And we'd pull him out to the garage and say, come on, play bass for us. So he started doing that and started playing bass. And it wasn't long after until Danny replaced the drummer. Our job to take, you know, those elements of what was that traditional music and how that evolved to become rock and roll which is kind of a personification of all of the elements of traditional music and, and that's kind of just pushing everything and amplifying it and it's kind of you know we feel that it's our kind of our job to take it where it was or where it has you know conspired in different places and and get it back to where maybe it was or where we want to take it and evolve it again further. I think that there is a certain amount, you know, done as far as the, you know, the evolution of those sounds and the blues and a lot of those rudimentary or traditional type, you know, genres like folk and, and blues and soul and stuff. And that was taken to a certain point and then stopped evolving. And some of it was continued to take and be taken forward, but I think what you know, needs to be done is, you know, to reinvention of that you know, creatively um, contributing uh, environments. So we, we grew up with vinyl. So, yeah, we were given the opportunity to have those influences, and I think that just comes through in the music. Well, I think that we've slowly progressed naturally through the, the channels of time doing this, but, I mean, over the last five years, I you know, it's very difficult for any of us to particularly gauge the performance. Like, one night could be brilliant, the next could be all right. And you, no matter what, even if you listen back on them, I think they're all uniquely you know, interesting on their own. But yeah, of course, I, I think we are getting a lot better. The fact that we're, I don't think we really fancied ourselves ever studio musicians. We were never that, we always, as soon as we got together and started doing this, we were always playing, playing live and jamming constantly. So that's something that we're very familiar with. So it was really interesting getting into the studio for the first time and actually trying to understand it. It was a strong, it was a really strong learning curve because we were not familiar. Yeah, you know, I think that's been a classic exchange of, of music between Europe and the America and you know in the United States for uh, quite some time it's like you know even back when Hendrix went over to Europe or Joplin or the Doors you know and it's hard for them to make it here in the States and then the same thing for the Europeans you know they send us you know, the British invasion and they send us all these musicians and, it, and we, it, we seem to exchange musicians back and forth that's kind of always how it's been but I think it, I think it is just that because if I'm sitting there writing a song just for myself and I'm going through m- melody, you know, it just is there. Usually you're singing something on top of it, and then you start you start thinking about it, and he does it, and everybody does it. We're like, what, what does that mean? Because it just comes out of nowhere. These lyrics that just just are there. And you're like, what the hell does that mean? And you're putting it to context for yourself and understand why it's there. It's a, a different approach. Now I wouldn't say different, but unique approach to the acoustic stuff. As far as we've sculpted ourselves electrically, I think we've equally done that from an acoustic angle, from yeah. an acoustic perspective. Yeah. So it's equally is interesting, but we hope at some some point everybody can hear the acoustic segment. That's the interesting thing. I don't think that uh, for us, for us, it was the people that had been, you know, inspired us to pick up instruments and play. You know, those guitar heroes that we all looked up to, and those bass heroes, and those sing, those singer heroes, and the drummer heroes. And I don't think that we've got those anymore. I, don't, I think, or they're very scarce anyway. 
Someday I can inspire one person to pick up a guitar and play it. I mean, that's that's all what it's about, you know. And seeing those kids out there, and so hopefully they can pick up those instruments and play something themselves for real.